Everybody keeps saying that these ChatGPT plugins are a game changer. But what are they? How do they make your life better? How do you get and install them? How do you use them? What can they do? Come to think of it, what's ChatGPT anyways? Answering those questions is what this video is all about. ChatGPT is a website where you can go to talk to an unbelievably smart chatbot. And I really mean like unbelievably smart. In fact, it's even considered a breakthrough in artificial intelligence. It can answer questions, write poems, draft emails, and way more. For any topic in any tone that you want. It can act as your advisor, best friend, and assistant all in one. But until today, there's been a couple of reasons why it hasn't lived up to its full potential. And those two reasons are because it couldn't connect to the internet or the apps on your phone. But that all changes today with the release of ChatGPT plugins. Now this little text box genius can tell you about last night's sports scores or do your shopping for you. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get set up with ChatGPT, how to install the plugins, and even some examples using my favorites. How do you get access to ChatGPT plugins? If you want to experience the power of ChatGPT's new plugins, then first open your web browser and navigate to chat.open openai.com. So there's two versions. One's called 3.5, one's called 4. The 4 is more advanced, but the 3.5 is free to use. And to use the plugins, you do need to upgrade. So you'll have to be on 4.0 with the plugins, and that will cost you $20 per month. If you haven't upgraded, look in the bottom left-hand corner, click on that button, and then sign up with your credit card. Then you'll be greeted with this ChatGPT Plus home screen. So first, click this button, switch over to GPT-4. Then click on your email in the bottom left corner and go to settings. Click on beta features, turn on web browsing, and plugins. And now you'll notice the drop down says browsing and plugins. Congratulations, we're ready to rock. Let me show you what ChatGPT is capable of once you have the new browser plugin installed. First, click on the GPT-4 button, go down to web browser, turn it on. So I'll start by asking it a question that it needs to search the internet to understand, something that happened just last night. I'm a big fan of the Las Vegas Golden Knights hockey team. Can you tell me if they're still in the playoffs? If so, tell me how this series turned out, but if not, let me down easy. So ChatGPT knows, good news, the Las Vegas Golden Knights are still in the playoffs. It gives me some more details about that, but I want to direct your attention up to this new little browser plugin. This is new, and when you click on it, it actually tells you a little bit about what it was doing in the background. So it did essentially what's a Bing search. It went out and looked up things on the internet for me. It read some content, which I guess gave it some context over the Oilers because it did another search after that, read some more content, and decided that it got what it needed, and it gave me my prompt. Now let me show you an example of when it doesn't have access to this plugin. I'll ask it the same question. I don't have real-time updates or live data. I was last updated September 2021, and that's why this plugin is a game changer. Changer. Now I'm going to turn on the plugins, which actually switches off the browsing, but you'll see why. Think of this a little bit like an app store, where now it's going to be directed into some kind of an API, some kind of a data source, some kind of an application. So it's still the early days. So imagine the Apple App Store like in the first couple weeks that it came out. All the applications are the first movers, but there's still quite a bit of them. About 11 pages, and today is my first day having access to it. I found all sorts of fun stuff to play with. So we'll start by installing the most popular one so far, Kayak. So this is a great website for traveling. Flights, cars, hotels, stuff like that. So once it's added to your drop-down list, just check the box next to it. So now just ask it a travel question and it will do all the complicated stuff of getting the data from their website, from their database, and bringing it to you in a natural way. So I'm gonna let it know that I'm interested in traveling to Disneyland. This is a pretty tricky question because Disneyland's not an airport. Let's see how it handles it. So this little drop-down box means that it's formulating a query to talk to the Kayak website. We'll look at that in a minute, but I want to show you this prompt how it kind of recognized that Disneyland's not a destination and it even knew what to do next. It showed me the two closest airports and it's gonna retrieve data for both of them. And that's really cool. I mean, this is really the kind of stuff that normally a travel planner would have had to do. So here's five flights to one of the airports. All perfectly formatted, no advertisements, it links right to what I want. Now it's starting the second query, and once again, a really easy to understand list to the other airport. Let's dive into these little drop-down boxes. So it started by turning my question into computer code. Now the problem was the destination was Anaheim, and the response from Kayak was, I don't know how to take you there. But it's so intelligent, it decided to correct its error and make another query. And you can see now it automatically queried the right airport. And it took this technically formatted response and made it look really pretty and understandable. And these are all clickable links, so I can just buy the ticket. Imagine, it won't be that much longer until my credit card's in the system and I can just say, go ahead and book that. This is getting amazing. If you love YouTube even like half as much as I do, you're gonna love this ChatGPT plugin. It's called Video Insights and it lets you directly connect through the API to the big video platforms. So to demonstrate how this plugin works, let's go check out a video from one of my favorite YouTube creators, Matt Wolf. Now obviously I've already watched it and you can see by the comment below, but with the new API, I can directly connect ChatGPT to his video. I can just say in a natural language, just can you read this video for me and give me a list of the tools he's talking about? Like you should understand, when this works, it's 
it's something I, I just can't believe. So as long as that video insights box is checked, then I can come down here and drop the URL into the chat box. Now sit back and get ready to have your mind freaking blown because it can read the entire transcript, understand what Matt was talking about, and actually pull out all the tools in a nice bulleted list. This is absolutely amazing. And look at how incredible that list is. ChatGPT, MyMind, Feedly, Recast, ChatPDF, Perplexly, Text, Midjourney, Stable Diffusion, and His Future Tools. Wow, how cool is that? Let's have a peek at the dropdown. So ChatGPT was smart enough to take it the context that I wrote it in and the full URL, format it in just a way that the YouTube API can read it. And it pulled back the entire transcript of his video. In addition to some other metadata, like the title, description, the time it was published, and all the tags that he used. Look at that tag, crazy free AI tools. Probably was ranking for it. There's his statistics, the likes and views, incredible stuff. Now let's talk about my personal favorite plugin. Even though I love the YouTube one, I like the Wolfram Alpha one even more. So Wolfram Alpha is a computation engine. So it's both a very specific mathematical programming language and it's a source of large curated data sets. And with ChatGPT able to take natural language and turn it into the computer code and execute on all that data, it's just fascinating and amazing and it's going to change the game. So first you need an understanding of what kind of data we're actually working with. They come from all over the sciences. So a quick sampling, there's data for mathematics, physics, chemistry, astronomy, geography, socioeconomic data, health and medicine, weather data, music, language, computational sciences, all sorts of stuff. So knowing that, you can ask any basic question that you think would be in those data sets. So to use the plugin first, you need to enable it by going down to the plugin store, finding the Wolfram Alpha plugin, and then making sure it's active by checking this box. After that, you can ask a question like this. How many elephants would you need to stack on top of one another to reach all the way up to where the ISS space station is located? It seems silly, but I have super high confidence this will come up with an answer. So first, it finds out that an elephant is on average 120 inches tall, and then it looks up the ISS space station, which is 120 miles above us, and it converts the two measurements into the same unit. It makes that its own query, sends it out again, and there's your answer, 178,000 elephants. Done, just like that, all of that. Like, just think about how crazy that is. I mean, not that it couldn't have been done before with a little bit of effort, but that saves you a ton of time, and it might have been prohibitively just like bothersome for that kind of an answer before. I wanna show you a new ChatGPT plugin that I learned about for the first time today. And it turns out that Golden is a place where you can get curated factual information about companies. So on their website, you can see this example, how Elon Musk is connected to all these different companies. So if that's the kind of thing it's good at, let's query it through ChatGPT just to see what it comes up with. So I asked it to list out all the different companies that Elon Musk has been connected to. Now you can see from this dropdown, it's taken that natural language, turned it into a query to the API. And now it's fetching that data from Golden's database and pulling it in and reformatting it into just natural language. Now, if I wanna see it in chronological order from Elon's life, I think it can do that too. So I'm gonna ask it a natural language question. It might be a bit difficult, but also it might know Elon Musk's story well enough to just reorder these in the order that would be chronological to his life. Let's give it a try. Wow, and it was able to do that. So that's inherent knowledge in the system because you can see that it didn't make another query, but it was able to just understand my language and reorder it, but it also knew what it had brought in from the database before. This is just so different and so cool. And then it even gives me a link to their website so you can see it formatted on their website in case I wanna continue over here. So I'm actually a big fan of old school comics. I've got a whole bunch of them over there on the shelf. Calvin and Hobbes, Peanuts, and some of the newer ones like Awkward Yeti and Strange Planet. I didn't go through the superhero comic book phase. I like the kind of just newspaper style ones. So when I saw there was a chat GPT plugin that was meant for this kind of comics, I was like, let's check this out. So first let's enable the plugin called Comic Finder. Go to the chat GPT4 at the top right hand corner. Go down to plugins, find it in the plugin store. Then just make sure to activate it by checking the box. And now you can ask a fun question like this. Can you help me find this old uh, XKCD comic where one of the stick figures makes this like pseudo command to get a sandwich? And this is like a real thing. I have no idea where to find this, but it's one of the comics that's just in my head for some reason. And check this out. So you see the drop down. What it's doing right now is it's actually querying a database of comics. And look, there it is. It found it. Sure, here it is. But I guarantee we could look up any of these. This is incredible stuff. Make me a sandwich. What? Make it yourself. Pseudo make me a sandwich. Okay. It just doesn't get any funnier than that. That stuck with me for years. Now I want to demo the Scholar API plugin called Scholar AI, which can help you look up all sorts of scientific papers. Click on ChatGPT4, then go down to plugins, add this one to your account, and then you can ask ChatGPT a question like this. In the field of artificial intelligence research, what research paper about variational autoencoders has the most references? This is a tough question because it has to know what an autoencoder is and which papers it's referenced, and then rank them by citation and then put it in a natural 
particular language and give it back to me. But the incredible power of ChatGPT plugins makes that possible. Hmm, looks like it hit an error, but it's gonna try again. But it found a paper that it thinks is the highest rated. And look, it gives me a small summary of the paper and then a link. All right, it definitely has variational autoencoders in the title. So this is a good paper at least to go to. Okay, here's all the references. They're enumerated, so let's just scroll to the bottom. And it has 45 references, which seems like a lot. It could be right. So you can see this is just the beginning. The floodgates have opened. When these plugins start connecting ChatGPT to everything in the internet, all of the websites, all of the APIs, all the databases, we are gonna have such a powerful tool and a whole new paradigm for just understanding knowledge. Knowledge. This is the beginning of a crazy journey. So smash that subscribe button.